So the Chaos Wastes DLC for Vermintide 2 is nearly upon us, and it's free for everybody. But maybe you have no clue what it is or how it works. Well, that's what I'm going to show you. It's going to be a basic overview of how it works, but there are a couple of things that are still locked in the build that I have, so I don't know everything, but you should get the gist of it. Let us begin. So the Chaos Wastes is all about the expedition, a long journey, beginning here on this far left side of the map, and you'll be choosing with your teammates which path you take. There'll be forks in the road to different levels, and you can choose which levels you do. And as you can see, they're all different with varying kinds of challenges. This one has less hordes, but more specials, different things like that. There's also the Shrines of Fortune, which you can stop at along the way. This will allow you to buy some buffs for your party in various ways with the currency you'll be finding through the levels. As you can see, the one I've chosen here means we'll fight a monster in the next level, and if we manage to defeat it, we'll get an increase to max health of 20%. And there's some more personal ones on the right side there, all bought by the Pilgrim's Coin currency, which we each have our own account of. So that's one of the ways we're going to be buffing and powering ourselves up as we go. And the goal of this expedition is, of course, to get to the other end of the board, all the way over here, to complete the final level. But you only get one shot at this. If you die on a level, game over. You're starting again. So you've got to make it through five, six levels without wiping at all. That is everybody, I mean, not just one person. You can die individually, it's fine. As long as your team keeps going and gets you up later, you're still good. So you'll pick your levels and go through them in various environments with various different buffs on the level, with all the different buffs and debuffs you can get for yourself as well. And then when your adventure begins, you will start as a total noob with grey gear. You can choose the weapons that you bring into the level, but they will be grey, right? Bottom of the pile crappiest stuff. As you progress through your expedition of five, six, maybe seven levels, you will find altars that will allow you to upgrade or maybe potentially change your weapon for a different one. This will upgrade my current weapon to whatever color it is, in this case green, so I can power up my weapon a little bit, make it a little bit stronger, and thus help me on my journey through this expedition. Everybody is going to be doing this through the entire thing. So that's just going to be part of the personal journey for you, is upgrading and choosing which weapons you want to use. To be able to afford these upgrades though, we need to find those pilgrim coins that I mentioned earlier, that currency that is just lying around the level like so. You grab it and then it goes into a little counter in the top right corner, and boom, you've got yourself some pilgrim coins. So there's going to be kind of the managing of that currency. Do you want to use it to upgrade your weapons? Do you want to use it at those shrines to get some boons for yourself or for your party? It's up to you. There's also a whole bunch of new potions. You can see on the right, the potion of agility increases my dodge distance. There's a whole bunch of new potions that do various things to help you on your way. So you've got to keep an eye out for this currency. I believe it's shared between the party as well. So it's not just like one person is going to be able to hoard it all. So we're going to be gathering that, moving through the levels, finding more of these altars. Here's a blue one upgrading my spear and shield for a nice improvement. That's going to help us along the way. And so far I found that to be a pretty fun mechanic. It's cool that you start kind of with rags and you make your way to riches with a better weapon. Or you can even change weapons along the way as well. Because you are going to be stuck playing the same character. But you can mix things up a bit for yourself by picking up a different weapon if you should come across the appropriate altar. There's also these other kind of power up altars. Seek Divine Boon, this one, which gives us a random buff. For the remainder of our expedition, I should say. So we've got many a way to strengthen ourselves up, so you can be as strong as Samwise Gamgee on his trip to Mordor. That could be you. Eventually, you should be able to turn yourself into a beefcake with some red legendary gear. And along the way of all this, you might find some trials to do. These basically, so far at least from the ones I've done, they spawn a boss. If you kill the boss, you get a boon that you can choose. So again, just another way that you buff yourself up on the journey. But you don't have to take these on, you can just ignore them and keep going if you don't feel your party is in a good state to be fighting a monster, you can avoid it. But hey, fortune favors the brave. Sometimes you might start one of these fights thinking, hey, it's a clear time, we can take out this monster while it's all alone, and then a horde will come as you activate it, so that does make it considerably harder. So there is a good deal of risk, which is important to think about when we remember the fact that if we all die and we wipe, we are going to fail this campaign and we're going to have to restart. So you do have to be careful when making these decisions. This is going to be really fun on the higher difficulties when everyone's a bit more used to it and we try out the higher difficulties. It's going to be tough and you're going to have to make sound decisions for how your party is at the time on whether you do these or not. So that is pretty much the gist of it from what I've played so far. We did make it to the end of a campaign, and the idea is to get to the Citadel of Eternity, where you can pray to one of the gods to try and save you from the end times, right? 
And it seems like there's going to be rewards for the more times that you complete a campaign or an expedition and get all the way to the end you get to make your prayer and then you build those prayers up and you use them for something i'm not quite sure i didn't get to see it in this press build there is a store that was locked it said it was disabled so i guess you just couldn't do it in this build but that's going to be a thing maybe where you can spend reward points to buy something i don't know haven't seen it yet but it's all going to be about making the long expedition journey and surviving now to my experience with it so far if you want my honest opinion it seems pretty fun it's pretty cool to have the long expedition, to have the building up of your character through finding things through the level. Is there anything greatly new or different with the game? Not really. As we know, there's been no new enemies added, and it's very much a lot of the same stuff that we've already seen before in levels. A lot of arenas where you have to hold the ground and stay in a certain zone for a certain amount of time and things like that. Get the barrels here and do this. So it would have been nice to see a few more different things like that. A few more puzzles maybe. A few more kind of co op -y sections somehow. Maybe the party could split up. I don't know if that would work with AI. Maybe that's just not possible. But something different would have been really nice to see is all. Of course we have the new weapons coming out with this. The Forgotten Relics DLC which brings a new weapon to each character. Which is nice. It's always good to have new weapons and new things to play with. But how much longevity this really has, we'll have to wait and see. I'm not sure, like I said, what the ultimate reward of doing the expeditions over and over and over again is. Because you're not really improving your normal weapons, right? Because these are weapons that get turned to grey weapons when you take them in and then you level them up. So they're not going to be useful in the regular Vermintide 2 campaign bits. It's going to be only in the Chaos Wastes. So yeah, going to be interesting to see what it all means and what it's all about. Because as I say, I haven't put a ton of hours into this yet, so I'm still learning as I go. But I think this is a good quick start guide to help you understand what the hell is going on when you first jump in. Because if you're new to the game, or if you haven't really looked into this, you're going to be like, wow, what the hell am I doing in this random place with these crappy grey weapons? There are some nice new environments, like this one, as you can see. I do like the grey with the lava effect. It's all very nice. It's always good to have new environments to explore. That's one of the big parts of the fun of this game, I think. And it is pretty cool overall that you get the kind of randomised campaign where you might play this level in the future but it won't be the same you'll have a different set of rules you might have more hordes you might have more specials you might have more bosses so there is going to be an element of randomness to every level that you do and in theory they say you shouldn't really be playing the same level twice it's going to be a different experience every time you play but to me this should be a good filler hopefully until we get versus mode god damn it i'm waiting on that versus mode i played left for dead for many years purely for versus so this with versus whoa, should be my jam but there we go, Chaos Wastes in Vermintide 2, releasing for everybody very soon. I hope you've enjoyed this, thanks for watching, let me know what you think of this. Does it look boring, does it look good, does it look like the best thing you've ever seen? Let me know. See you in the future.